you're logged on to IndianTimesDaily.com, the only portal for news from India, America, Canada, Punjab and Gujarat. In English, Punjabi and Gujarati with a list of well-established businesses and resources that you may need. I'm Prerna Sharma and today's headlines are In India, the government will work jointly with Seychelles on the Assumption Island project. And BJP's Arun Jaitley has compared former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi to dictator Adolf Hitler. In America, Harley-Davidson may make more motorcycles outside the US. And an Indian-American senator may run for US President in 2020. In Punjab, SAD's role during the emergency period has been praised. And Pakistan's envoy has said that people-to-people -people interaction must continue. Stay tuned to IndianTimesDaily.com and I'll be back with all the news that's important for you from India, America and Punjab. Welcome back to Indian Times Daily. The top 10 headlines from India are India and Seychelles have agreed to work together on a project to develop a naval base at the Assumption Island, keeping each other's concerns in mind. India also announced 100 million US dollar credit to Seychelles for augmenting its defense capabilities. In his latest article titled The Tyranny of Emergency, senior BJP leader Arun Jaitley has compared former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi to dictator Adolf Hitler. He also praised the SAD, stating how its role during the period earned it great respect in the country. Life across the Kashmir Valley was derailed by a separatist-sponsored shutdown, even as the authorities detained senior separatist leaders to prevent their participation in protests. Shops, public transport, other business establishments and educational institutions remain closed in the valley. The Gujarat High Court has awarded 10 years rigorous imprisonment to three convicts in the 2002 Naroda Patia massacre case. It observed that their punishment must be consistent with the brutality of the crime. NCP Chief Sharad Pawar has said that a pre-poll grand alliance in the next year's Lok Sabha elections is not practical. He maintained that non-BJP parties may come together for state-specific alliances to take on the ruling BJP. Finance Minister Piyush Goyal has termed India a sweet spot where the rule of law prevails. He said that the country wants investments in nine projects from the China-based AIIB. India has already picked up almost 28% of AIIB's total lendings for seven projects. The monsoon session of Parliament will commence from July 18th and end on August 10th, the Cabinet Committee of Parliamentary Affairs has recommended. The session would have nearly 18 sittings. At least five people were killed between Sunday night and Monday afternoon following heavy rain in and around Mumbai, which disrupted life in the city. The incessant rainfall has resulted in air, train and road services being disrupted. The Delhi High Court has asked authority not to act till July for the 16,500 trees sanctioned by the Centre for the Redevelopment of six South Delhi colonies. All these areas are home to government employees. Bollywood superstar Sri Devi Kapoor was honoured for her final role in the 2017 film Mom at the International Indian Film Academy Awards in Bangkok, winning the Best Actress at the Celebration of Dance, Music and Film. Months earlier, she died due to accidental drowning at a Dubai hotel. Stay tuned to Indian Times Daily as the news from America and Punjab follows. Welcome back to Indian Times Daily. The top 10 headlines from America are Harley Davidson is planning to shift some motorcycle production away from the US to avoid the substantial burden of European Union tariffs. The measures are a response to new US duties on steel and aluminium imports. Indian origin American Senator Kamala Harris has not ruled out the prospects of her running for the US President in 2020. Harris, the first Indian origin US Senator, is viewed as a rising star in democratic politics. India has signaled its readiness to ink two bilateral military pacts, procure helicopters worth $3 billion and participate in a joint tri-service amphibious exercise with the US for the first time. The move comes ahead of the first India-US 2 plus 2 dialogue between the foreign ministers of both nations. Indian American Aruna Miller is seeking to become the second Indian American woman to enter the US House of Representatives. Miller is confident of winning from Maryland, which is an all-male congressional delegation. US National Security Advisor John Bolton will meet Russia's top diplomat in Moscow this week. Bolton would go with a possible meeting between Donald Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin on the agenda. President Donald Trump is set to announce new measures to target growing Chinese investment in key technologies in the US. The twin initiatives are designed to prevent Beijing from moving ahead with plans outlined in its Made in China 2025 report to become a global leader. 
A transgender woman was kicked out of a restaurant after she refused to show her ID, confirming she was a female in order to use the facility's women bathroom. Charlotte Clymer is an activist who works with the Human Rights Campaign. President Donald Trump has compared people entering the US from Mexico to invaders and said they should be immediately sent back without appearing before a judge. The American Civil Liberties Union rebuked that such a step would be illegal and violate the Constitution. NASA has sought partnership to develop the first element of the Gateway, which will become the orbital outpost for robotic and human exploration operations in deep space. NASA has sought for a high-power 50-kilowatt solar electric propulsion spacecraft to maintain the Gateway's position and move it between lunar orbits. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has approved GW Pharmaceuticals' epilepsy treatment, making it the first cannabis-based drug to win approval in the country. This could potentially open floodgates for more research into the medicinal properties of cannabis. I'll be back. Stay logged on to IndianTimesDaily.com as the news from Punjab follows. Welcome back to Indian Times Daily. The top 10 headlines from Punjab are Senior BJP leader Arun Jaitley has praised the SAD for its role during the emergency. The party had offered its cadres for Satyagraha every day throughout the emergency outside the Golden Temple and courted arrest. He emphasized on how the party earned great respect in the country due to it. Deputy High Commissioner of Pakistan in India, Sayyid Haider Shah, has said that people to people interaction between the two countries should not be hindered. A day earlier, Indian envoy Ajay Bisaria was denied access to Gurdwara Panja Sahib in Pakistan. The fate of lakhs of post-metric students from socially backward communities hangs in balance as the centre and state are at spa over the scholarship scheme for SE students. The union government had earlier changed the format of dispersing scholarship by basing it on the last contribution made by the state. The state will pay full compensation of 4.5 crore rupees to the Jodhpur detainees if the centre fails to give its share. Chief Minister Amrinder Singh's announcement came after a telephonic conversation with Union Home Secretary Rajiv Gorba. A third victim of drug overdose has rocked Amritsar in the last three days. A youth, Harbhet Singh, was found dead near the railway lines in Varka area recently. Residents found a syringe and small vial near his body. The state will deploy the Central Industrial Security Force for checking and frisking in six high-security jails. They will be deployed by the end of next month as part of the government's efforts to strengthen prison security. The SGPC has constituted a cell to legally pursue the cases of six who were illegally detained in a Jodhpur jail after Operation Blue Star. The announcement was made by SGPC Chief Govind Singh Longawal while commencing the Karseva for the construction of facade of the Golden Temple's Guru Ramdas Langar Hall. The Department of Jails has ordered that all accused in sacrilege cases will be kept in separate barracks. The decision came after an accused was attacked by gangsters in Ljubljana Central Jail. Finance Minister Manpreet Badal has claimed that the state is witnessing an investment of 10,000 crore rupees for setting up 160 biomass plants. This will extend farmers' managerial practices for paddy straw and agricultural waste, along with keeping the state's environment clean. The Punjab Road Transport Corporation has decided to issue bus tickets to online machines from July 15. Transport Minister Aruna Chaudhary has announced that in the first phase, the scheme will be started at the Patiala bus depot and later will be launched in other depots as well. This is the end of the news bulletin, but stay tuned to IndianTimesDaily.com as news from Bollywood is coming up next. And do visit the resources section on this portal to find the best Indo-American businesses and resources. From accounting firms to wedding planners in your city. All of us at Indian Times Daily wish that you have a great day. Veteran actor Anil Kapoor on the fate of a probable Mr. India sequel said it will happen when it has to happen and that Sri Devi and Amrish Puri are surely missed. At the green carpet of the 19th edition of the International Indian Film Academy Awards on Sunday, Anil was asked about the sequel of the 1987 Entertainer. He said, Every film has its own destiny, and when it's going to happen, it will happen. There were talks that Anil and Sri Devi would be back for the follow up of the movie, originally directed by Shekhar Kapoor. Short on words over his co actor and sister in law Sri Devi's demise earlier this year, Anil said, We will miss her, we will miss Amrish Puri Mogambo. But life goes on. We miss all of them and we will try our best to follow their legacy and so that we can make them proud. We make a good film and they appreciate it. The actor who has clocked 35 years in the film industry and whose latest release is Race 3 is now looking forward to Fane Khan.
The 19th edition of IFA in Bangkok finally came to an end on Sunday night with lots of glitz and glamour. From veteran beauty Rekha to the younger generation's Varun Dhawan set the stage on fire with their performances. Let's take a look at the entertainment portions at IFA. To begin with, veteran Rekha, who mesmerized everyone after 20 long years with her performance on her hit Evergreen songs. Rekha looked stunning in a powder pink anarkali, performing on songs like Dil Cheez Kya Hai, In Aankho Ki Masti Mein, and so on. Actor Ranbir Kapoor surprised everyone with his rock star look. He looked dapper in an all-black ensemble with a double neck guitar in his hands. Shraddha Kapoor too performed that night, but more than her performance, seemed like she was more excited to watch Rekha live on stage. Hugging Rekha and mesmerized by her, she shared her photograph on Instagram. Varun Dhawan too made it a night worth remembering with his performances on some hit numbers. He too shared his fan moment with Rekha on social media. The ones who grabbed the audience with duets were Bobby Deol and Yulia Wantor and Arjun Kapoor with Priti Sana. Well, with such teasers, we await the full coverage to air soon on television.